last dars we had um, the discussion on the famous hadith of Sahih Muslim known as Hadith Jibri and we spoke about how Jibreel alayhi salam came in the form of Dihya al-Kalbi radiallahu an. Dihya al-Kalbi radiallahu an was the most beautiful Sahabi. It has been mentioned that <coughs> when he would walk in the streets of Medina and Mecca, he would cover his face with a shawl because of the beauty that he possessed. <coughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam in this time through Dihya al-Kalbi radiallahu an. And it is mentioned that in all the times that Jibreel alayhi salam came in the sign, in the form of human being, he came in the sign, in the in the shape of Dihya al-Kalbi radiallahu an. There were some lessons that we learned. We learned about adab of Talib al-Ilm. Because Jibreel alayhi salam comes as a teacher through teaching us Islam through the means of being a student. So he's teaching us Islam. However, at the same time, he's a student. Because he is learning, he's asking the Prophet wasallam the questions. So subhanAllah, it is a very interesting, very intriguing thing. Because Jibreel is sahib al-wahi. He is the one that is possessing the wahi and bringing the wahi. However, the way that he approaches is in such a manner that he is affirming the answer, but also questioning. So in this one hadith, Jibreel salam teaches us two things. What is the correct answer according to wahi? That is one thing. The second aspect is the way a person should seek knowledge. So the adab that we learned here was that he was very clean. And he was well, um, he was very presentable. And the way that he sat with the Prophet wasallam in the, in the jilsat al-tashahud, in the way of tashahud. And how he... Resp- listen, listen to the answer of the Prophet wasallam. You can see from the hadith that it is very, very, um, it is a very open and a respectful conversation. <coughs> and this is the the true essence of talab al-ilm. Talab al-ilm is um, a great, a great deed. So Jibreel alayhi salam is teaching us that which the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam are sent with, and the inheritors of those Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam are the prophets, are the um, scholars, like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said. So then we talked about Islam and Iman, the definition of Islam and Iman and how they are separate. Um, and Islam generally how we mentioned that the separation or the difference in the hadith is that Islam is al-amal al-zahira. Those physical acts that are sha'ayir al-deen. a sha'ira, you've probably heard this word before. That, for example, you'll hear Al Adhan Sha'ira, Al Ka'aba Sha'ira. Sha'ira of Deen means that thing in the Arabic language, what it refers to, is that thing that is legislated by Allah as a sign of Islam. So, Ka'aba is only for Muslims, right? So, since the Ka'aba is only the house of Allah for the Muslimin, and they only the Muslims pray this way, so it is a Sha'ira of Deen, it is a sign of Islam. Like that, um, the Jews, they used to have a horn. And they used to call the people to their prayer through the horn. So when in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, when the Adhan didn't exist. So the Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba, they used to say, As-salatu jami'ah, as-salatu jami'ah, as-salatu jami'ah. Salah is congregating, salah is congregating. And they would go around and certain Sahaba would go around and it's called Tathweeb. Where after um, Salah had begun or when Salah was approaching, they would have people designated to walk around and say Salah is congregating, Salah is congregating. Then the Prophet um, wanted a, he desired to have a more uh, glorious, a more very um, dignified method of doing this. So some of the Sahaba, because there was no wahi that came immediately. So some of the Sahaba said, why don't we do what the Yahud do? And we use the horn and call the people to the prayer. The Prophet ﷺ was inclined towards the way it was done. However, he did not like the fact of mushabahatu bil kuffar. He didn't want to resemble them in any way. So many of the Sahaba is mentioned, Umar radiallahu an, Bilal radiallahu an, and many of the Sahaba, they had a dream that about the Adhan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. 
And the Prophet wasallam, when he was told about the dream, he accepted the dream and that also became, it was, it was coinciding to the wahi the Prophet wasallam had received. So it was not that the dream had, um, had established the rule of Allah, no. It was that the dream occurred according to what the rule of Allah was going to be. So this is how the ulama have looked at it. And then adhan also becomes a sha'ira, is a sign of Islam. So this is what he means by Islam and uh, that you say that la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah and performing salah and zakat. It is those things that when people look at you, they see you as a believer. Now, how is this very important in, in modern day understanding or it's relevant to us today to understand that because Islam comes from both ends. You know, you hear uh, commonly people say that oh, only Allah can judge me. Right? You hear people say only Allah can judge me. It's between me and Allah. What do you have to do with it? So people use this as a, a, as a means of repelling people from um, any blame that can be put upon them. So a person is not playing, praying. He's not fasting. He's not doing good. And when somebody questions him or gives him nasiha or rebukes them for that act, then they'll say it's between me and Allah, right? So this is a, a sense of they wanting to say that all deeds are only in the heart, right? But the mahal, the where the deed sprouts from is in the heart. However, it does not stay there, right? So if a person stands and says, I'm praying salah in my mind, is he praying? He's not praying. The mahal or the masdar, the beginning point of amal is is the qalb, is the heart. However, for the amal to be maqbool, mashru'ah, when we say mashru'ah, for it to be existent in the side, in the court of Allah, it has to exist physically. So this is where the difference between Islam and the definition of Iman, even though they differ, they're coinciding so well. Because the mahal, the place where you are starting your ibadah, the reason why you are motivated to believe and do good deeds is because of your iman and yaqeen. However, your iman and yaqeen is not complete until they result into physical action. So the Prophet ﷺ says, as you all know, that none of you is a true believer until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. So what does that mean? The Prophet ﷺ is telling us that you may believe, but that belief is not actually true when the result of that is not existent. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Al Muslim man salim al Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. A Muslim is the a true Muslim is the one who the other Muslims are protected from his hand physically and from his mouth um, uh, through through speech, verbally. So that is another teaching of that Islam is an act, a physical um, action that must exist. And Iman is, is the factor that motivates the person to live according to that way. So to say, to take Islam out of it and to just have Iman is not complete. So if somebody says it's just between me and Allah and doesn't take the nasiha, he has, uh, he has not understood that he has thus accepted the fact that his iman is not complete. Because can a person have complete iman without Islam? Not possible. Nor can a person have complete Islam without iman. So these two things have to come together. They have to come together. Then we talked about um, Ihsan. Ihsan is basically when we're taking, in a nutshell, we're taking iman. Once we have that, we've built the iman in yaqeen. We build that belief in Allah, why we believe the aqaid, our creed, our we've fortified this in our heart. And then we've pra used this to practice the deen of Allah. You know, establishing salah, st establishing the commands of Allah in our life. Then what has resulted, then we are trying to get the maqsad of it. So when you study the hadith of Jibreel, you don't study it looking at what is Islam, Iman and Ihsan. You study it at how Jibreel alayhi salam comes to Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam uses these three things to teach us the maqsad of life. It is to establish iman first because there is no Islam without iman. There is no Islam without iman and there is no point of Islam without iman. So when the person has corrected his iman, then he uses the iman or now he understands the gravity of akhirah you know, the shortness of this life, the vastness of Akhirah, and the importance of pleasing Allah, the fear of Allah. He understands these things truly. Then he res this results in action and good deed, and staying away from bad deed. 
and then when these two things come intact or these things are upheld and done correctly then a result of that is the maqsad of ibadah and the maqsad of ibadah is to worship Allah as though you see him and if you cannot read the maqsad ali the best maqsad the best uh, result then there is a lower result which is more common which is still very difficult to achieve it is to worship Allah as though he is always seeing you and what is this essentially? It is taqwa. This is taqwa. See, the word taqwa is such a strong word and it has become uh, used so, um, so regularly, but its meaning is so deep. So the word taqwa in the Arabic language comes from al-wiqaya. The ta in the beginning is actually not an original letter. The word is wiqaya. The three main letters is waw, qaf, and ya. And when you read in Quran, Allah says, Ku anfusakum ahlikum nara. Protect yourself and your family from the fire of Jahannam. Uh, in dua, we read, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al nar. Qina. Allah protect us. So, wiqaya literally means asiyana. It's to protect something from something. The Prophet wasallam said, the word ittiqa, ittiqa means to have taqwa. However, this is a uh, metaphorical meaning The real meaning is to protect yourself So Allah says Ittaqun nar Fear, protect yourself from Jahannam So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam In hadith says Ittaqun nar walaw bi shiqqi tamra Protect yourself From the fire of Jahannam Even if it be give, through giving sadaqah Of half of a date Not the full date if you cannot afford But if whatever you have give that Ittaqun nar, protect yourself from it so our understanding of what tahseel of taqwa, to acquire taqwa, means to acquire this tool. It is a tool of istihdar, of constant realization, recognition of Almighty Allah that protects us from sinning. And pushes us and engages us in good deed. This is why we have iman. This is why we work on iman. This is why we work on Islam, so that we can gain Ihsan. Then after this, then um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is asked about Qiyamah. Now, it's also very interesting how you see Jibreel Alayhi Salam is, the, the hadith is so long, but it is so in line with each other. You know, a person, may, who, a person that may overlook the study of the hadith, he may say, you know, maybe Jibreel is just turning to another topic. But Jibreel is establishing the purpose of life, right? He's telling, what is Iman? What is Islam? What is Ihsan? So what is the maqsad of Haya? After that, Jibreel is alluding to a question that reminds the person of the purpose to obtain that maqsad. So when a person thinks, okay, I, what is the purpose of Iman? Ihsan. And Islam, if I gain those things, what is the maqsad of that? Well, you need to gain this so that you protect yourself from that which will come. And that is Qiyamah. So, Jibreel alayhi salam says that, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fa'akhbirni anis sa'ah. Tell me and inform me about al Qiyamah, the hour. Qiyamah has been known as many things Al Ghashia, Al Qariya, Al Haqqa. Uh, Qiyamah, as you know, um, as -sa These are all metaphorical things. as means the hour, meaning the moment, the moment that that, that begins. And as -sa is is a word referring to the strike of Qiyamah. So as -sa is the moment Allah has decided for it to begin. Allah says, Baghtatan. That are you waiting for a sa'a qiyamah to come to you as a surprise? Meaning the moment, because for example, uh, Maghrib Salah, we just prayed, right? So there is a moment between day and night, right? There's a moment between it. So that moment hits, then Maghrib begins. Before that moment, Maghrib is not there. So it is daytime. The moment ends, it's nighttime. So that moment is a sa'a. That there is going to be a moment in which all of dunya will cease to exist. And thus will only be akhirah after this moment. 
And this is why it is a very strong word. Um, the other word that you hear is al qiyama. Al qiyama from um, from from the word qiyam. It means standing. And qiyama means the standing of the hour and when this um, this grave moment will exist. And then al ghashiyah means when um, you know this this horror, this uh, waqiyah, this existence or this occurrence event will basically cover all of mankind, all of existence. Al-Haqqa means when um, Qiyamah occurs, Al-Haqqa, it is bringing what, all the truth. Al-Haqqa, it is bringing all the truth. And in, 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 it is in and of itself completely true. Al-Qari'ah means the strike. Al-Qara'ah Qara means to strike something. It can be used for miqra. It can be used for like a hammer. Um, Al-Tariq, you see in the Surah Al-Tariq, a tariqh is the same thing. Mitlaqah is a hammer that can be used. And al-qari'ah can also be used for a strike of lightning. And all of these, a sa'iqah. So all of these words are, 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 have different, slightly different meanings, but they're all referring to the gravity of that day. So Jibreel alayhi salam asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that tell me about qiyamah. And Jibreel alayhi salam is responded with an answer by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam مَلْ مَسْؤُولُ عَنْهَا بِعَلَمَ مِنَ السَّائِلِ That the one who is being questioned does not know more than the one who is questioning. Meaning you Jibreel, you are asking me this? But we have no difference in this knowledge. Meaning, what does that mean? The only knowledge that exists of Qiyamah is that which Allah has given. The only knowledge? of Qiyamah that anyone can know in this world is that which Allah has given nobody has secret knowledge in Qiyamah Allah says that on that time يُجَلِّهَا لِوَقْتِهَا Allah will uh, reveal it at its moment and لَا يُجَلِّهَا إِلَّا هُو and it will be only be Allah that will do it now as you all know Qiyamah is a very um, subhanAllah is a very scary topic if any of you ever read a book of, um, uh, you know, Akhirah, then you should read At-Targhib or Tarheeb by Ibn Mundir, who brings many of the ahadith and the aqwal of Salaf and Sahaba, and uh, riwayat about Qiyamah, about Jannah and Jahannam. And you will, when you read it, you will, you will be terrified. But... Um, this is not our discussion, our study today is the hadith and the teachings of the hadith. However, it is very important for the person to do mudakara of these things. What is qiyamah? What will happen on qiyamah? In science, um, they are very clear on the fact that at some point the sun will also explode and will also become a black hole. They know that, okay, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but they know that's inevitable. Allah says, the shams kuwirat. And when it is turned into a, bl a, da a, a black hole, and everything is destroyed. Allah talks about, um, and, and you see if, you have, if you've ever seen um, in astrology and, and uh, in science how they talk about the um, ending of a star. They talk about the brightness, how it just dissipates. Allah says, إِذَا النُّجُومٌ كَدَرَتْ when the, when the stars become like dust, dirt. كَدَرَتْ is like mud, dirt. So dirt is because dirt is not very bright. In its color, it's very dark. And this is how Qiyamah will occur. That all the stars that light up this night, this time of night when there is only the moon and the sun is not there, all of those will fade. Allah says that, um, on Qiyamah that you will see the woman who is bearing a child that will give, abort that child. Allah says, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ السَّاخَ يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي Allah says, when the strike and yell and screech of Qiyamah comes, the man will run from his brother. And he will run from his wife. And he will run from his children. And he will run from his parents. And every man will only have that which he has done. Allah says in Surah Al-Ma'arij that when 
Qiyamah comes, the Muslimin or the pious, those people of Jannah, they will ask the people of Jahannam, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرَ Why are you here? What did you do? Why, did you, why are you being burned? Why are you being punished like this? So they say, قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ Oh Allah, oh, oh, oh people of Jannah, we didn't pray. وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ And we didn't feed the people. وَكُنَّا نَخُوضُ مَعَ الْخَائِضِينَ And we used to discuss things that were useless. Waste our time. We didn't care about the realities. We discussed everything but that. وَكُنَّا نُكَذِّبُ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينَ And we used to deny the coming of this Qiyamah. حَتَّى أَتَانَ الْيَقِينَ We kept living like this, which is human beings, life. He keeps leaving salah. He keeps being stingy and greedy, right? He keeps um, engaging those things that are not benefiting him. And he keeps forgetting the occurrence of Qiyamah. Allah says they, that the people of Jahannam will talk about these four qualities that they had. And then they will say, Hatta atan al We kept doing this until, uh, until our death came. فَمَا تَنْفَعُمْ شَفَاعَةُ الشَّافِعِينَ Allah says, when death came, when Qiyamah came, then nobody could help them. Then Allah says, they became like حُمُرٌ مُسْتَنْفِرَةٌ حُمُرٌ مُسْتَنْفِرَةٌ Allah says, they became like donkeys. Donkeys that are in a group, in a stampede, and when they're in a group in stampede, the lion comes from afar. فَرَّتْ مِنْ قَسْوَرَةٌ when that lion comes, the way they stampede and run. Allah says, like this, they were all engaged in the same thing carelessly, oblivious of akhirah, doing whatever they wanted to do, not praying their salah, not giving their zakat, not uh, performing their amal that they need to perform, worrying about things that they don't need to worry about, engaging in things that they don't need to, and careless of the fact that this time is approaching, and they are constantly like this all together. The example Allah gives, Humru Mustanfira, it is a group of people. Allah says they're like together, all together. Farrat bin Qaswara, the lion comes and they'll all run. And Allah says that verily he this person, there was a reminder for them, for whoever wanted to take that path. And verily, this person did not fear that qiyamah. <coughs> Allah says in Quran, there are too many ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, that verily the strike, the shaykh of qiyamah is shayun azim. It is very great. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would always be scared. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the hadith, um, he saw some sahaba laughing. They're sitting down and they're laughing, enjoying themselves. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, why are you laughing so much? He said, you know, Ya Rasulullah, we were thinking about something so funny, joking around. The Prophet wasallam face changed. He said, لَوْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَا أَعْلَمُ If you knew what I knew, لَضَّحِكْتُمْ قَلِيلًا You would laugh very little in your life. وَلَبَكَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا And you would cry so much. And verily, if you knew what I knew in this world, each and every one of you would climb to the, pe that, to the peak of the mountain. And you would scream, Oh Allah, protect me, oh Allah, save me out of the fear of Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ always taught the Sahaba to fear the strike of Qiyamah. Fear it. This is why the Prophet ﷺ, he was he was a very calm man, a very calm, very uh, composed human being. However, when it came to Amal Saleh, good deeds, he rushed. The Prophet is a very waqar, very composed human being. It is mentioned about him, alayhi salatu wasalam, he did not fear. Even in war, he was very calm. Very calm. In salah, he is very calm. In everything, he is very calm, except when he feels that he needs to rush to a good deed. So he's praying salah. He's leading the salah of sahaba in the masjid. And he finishes the salah, gets up, and he runs through the people. You know, they're all in the saf still. So Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stands up and he starts running through Takhatta. He starts walking through the shoulders of people, running fast. And all the Sahaba, they said, we turned around. We turned around to look at what is happening here. What is so special? What is, they thought something that the Sahaba, the Sahaba that were there, they say that we got scared. He said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam usually would not move, react in such a way. So they said that we thought jihad is occurring. And the enemy is coming to raid us. So he said, all of us were just ready for whatever we're going to face. 
And then the Prophet ﷺ slowly walks back in. So Sahaba Radiyam, they're all just staring there at him. Like, what is happening? And then they say, one man says, Ya Rasulullah, what happened? We thought that you were going to be attacked from jihad, that they were coming from behind. <coughs> Prophet ﷺ said, no, no, no. There was some sadaqah in my home I was going to give. And I, and I realized and I remembered that if Allah takes my life here, that that sadaqah will stay there and I will not get that reward. So the Prophet ﷺ feared, feared the, uh, the reality of qiyamah. And this only happens through mudakara. This only happens through suhbah. It is very, you know, everybody knows, every Muslim knows about Qiyamah, right? Everybody knows Akhirah occurs. But that realization doesn't exist in many people. And that realization is through Suhbat al-Salihin. Suhbat al-Salihin and Mudakara, the constant reminder of what will occur. Then the person will fear Qiyamah. And he will fear, and because of Qiyamah, because of the fear of Qiyamah, what will happen? He will fear the Ashrat of Qiyamah. And this is the second point I want to get to. Because once Jibreel alayhi salam does not get a response or an answer to Qiyamah, when is Qiyamah occurring? What is the second question he asks? He says, فَأَخْبِرْنِي an amaratiha." Okay, we don't know when it is, so tell us some signs. So when a person has this concern about Qiyamah, he fears Qiyamah, then he fears the signs of Qiyamah. Because a sign is something that is indicating to the existence of that thing. So the Prophet ﷺ only gave two examples here. Now, as many of you may already know, the signs or ashrat, ashrat of qiyamah, alamatu sa'a, as known, there are two types. Al-alamatu al-kubra, al-alamatu al-sughra. Those major signs and those minor signs. Now, in the study, in the study of Ashrat or the signs of Qiyamah, you will hear many things. Those things that are directly in Hadith are 100% true. However, the wuqua, the occurrence of that alama, of that sign, is something that is not is subjective. So, example the zilzal, you know the the earthquake. So people, the, we are taught in hadith about the massive earthquakes that will occur. So if some, somebody sees a big earthquake in um, some part of the world, and he says, this is the sign, min al-alamat al-kubra. It's such a big massive earthquake, that it must be amongst the signs. And it was in this part of the world, it must be. You can assume, you can hypothetically speak, and say that it is a possibility, is ihtimal. However, what about in the future, there's another one, and bigger than it. So, there is no doubt in the information that there will be the earthquake. However, the occurrence of that is something that is muhtamal. It is not known, it is not known by human being, it is only known by Allah. So, I have seen, for example, in, in the um, Sa'a or the Alam of Sa'a of Sharaq al-Na'al. Sharaq al-Na'al means... Uh, when the shoelace speaks. Shiraq al-Na'al. So there's a hadith that talks about Shiraq al-Na'al, the, when the shoelace speaks. Now, in the past, I have seen ulama in the past discuss about telephones. Saying that the Arabs, the Arabs, they would use Shiraq as this type of sign. Shiraq is this type of sign. And that was an indication of cell phones. So then when cell phones existed with the cord, with the cord, and they said, this is Shiraq al-Na'al. There's a, you know, there's an extension here. Now, in the last, whatever, year, eight months, Nike and other brands have started making actual shoes that speak, have Bluetooth in them. So when it's Shiraq al-Na'al, then this is also a possibility, the, the, the shoe is speaking. So like I said, it's very subjective. It is possible, it is possible for us to understand that the sa, the alama, the sign of qiyamah can reoccur. So the sign, when they are small signs, they can occur suddenly and increase in their occurrence. So you hear, as many of you must know, that when music is played in the masjid, you've heard this before? When music is played in the mosque. So it is possible that, you know, and, and then you'll hear people say that because of your uh, ringtone, this is a sign of qiyamah. It is possible that this is a subtle thing. 
But it is also possible as time passes that it become more serious and actual music being played. And so this is why we say it is subjective. The, it's not that one is correct and one is incorrect. It is that none of them are qatir. None of them are mashru' None of them are 100% from Allah. Only that information of that is from Allah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in this, um, in this hadith, only two things are mentioned. And you know, there are many of them. The first um, major sign of Qiyamah, anyone know? The first major sign of Qiyamah was the death of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that out of the great signs, the first is the death of me, passing him of the Khatim and Nabiji. Now after that, they started coming faster and faster. And now you see, it's very evident that you know Qiyamah can be very close. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Kalam hil basari." Allah says, "It is like the blink of the eye." Allah says, they think that it is far, and to us it is very soon. So Qiyamah, you know, we try look at it in years and time, but Qiyamah in terms of its reality can be like a moment, in, especially in comparison to Akhirah. Now in the hadith, أَنْتَلِدَ um, الْأَمَةُ رَبَّتَهَا أَنْتَلِدَ الْأَمَةُ رَبَّتَهَا When a slave woman gives birth to her master, so many of the ulama have said that this is the meaning of when mothers give birth to daughters that rule their life. When a woman gives birth to her king, her queen, Rabbata, her Rabba. Rabba is, is, is the feminine of Rabb, is, is the master of somebody, but it's a feminine. So some of the ulama have said that this is a sign of when women start to overpower their mothers. Why is this um, necessarily a very powerful sign? Because generally, out of men and women, women are the ones that are usually more calm um, in, compar in respect to their elders, their, their parents. They're very concerned about um, th their father and how to speak against them, right? And they're very more worried. And this is how it used to be in the past. Now as time has passed, it has really changed. And um, this can be a great sign. Um, some have said that it's referring to slavery. And this is, oh Allahu alam, it is also a very possible thing. That um, a woman will be given, will be a woman slave, will give, be giving birth to her master. And this is through obviously um, slavery. And the last um, is... أن ترى أن ترى الحفاة العراة العالى رعاء الشائي يتطاولون في البنيان. All everybody knows this one, as when um, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, when you see people hufat, they are shoeless, they have no shoes. In the desert, people they used to not have shoes. العراة is naked, meaning not enough clothing. So it's an indication of people in the desert. العالى poor, not very wealthy. Shah, they are not educated, they are basic labor men. They are um, sheep herders. Yatatawaluna fil bunyan, they compete in, in raising, constructing, and building tall buildings. So you see this today is very evident. Now, where um, I have, in my experience, I have seen many people who are hundred, have hundreds of million dollars in net worth of properties and building properties and they cannot read and write. I've personally met m individuals that have hundreds and millions of dollars. Even I, I know individuals here in BC that have become very great high level performer de developers and making uh, have 50, 60, 70 million dollars in um, property. And they don't sign by writing. They use their thumb because they don't have that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَرْزُقُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Allah can um, provide for whoever He wishes. Uh, but the fact is that the hadith is teaching us that Allah will have, that it will be, Qiyamah will be, one sign of Qiyamah is that simple people that do not seem entitled or capable of these things, they will be the people leading these things. The people that you don't think will be so successful, they will be the ones leading these things. And this is um, obviously a sign of Qiyamah, however, one of the one lesson which a lot of people maybe don't focus on in this uh, alama, in the sign, is this part of it. 
that the hadith is telling us one of the signs of qiyamah is that the people that are incapable or thought of to be incapable of being successful, they are sometimes found as beyond successful. Those people, you will uh, be amazed that they're like, like you see today that, you know, there are billion, billion, uh, billionaires that dropped out of college. And people say today that, you know, how, uh, I, I've even watched interviews where those people say the best thing is drop out of college. <laughs> all, all they mean to say is that you cannot box a person based on certain um, factors. And it's not that college is bad for them, but this is a way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He teaches the human being that the rizq is not in their hand and the asbab are not the dhruf, are not the circumstances that, re that result in definite rizq. And that is only from Allah. And Allah can give rizq to the person who has nothing. And it seems apparently that he should not have nothing and he has so much. So this is one of the signs of uh, Qiyamah. And then last, and it ends here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all of the Sahaba left, and, they, and the Umar radiallahu anh stayed there for a little while, and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after everybody left, and this is a very beautiful thing. Look how everybody left, Umar radiallahu anh stays. And you can see that Suhbah, this is a very important part of Talib al Out of every sea, See, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam is coming as a student, but you find Umar is also teaching you student. Because when everybody gets the information and disperses, Umar waits to see, can I get something else? So he sits there and waits, and tell Nabi alayhi salatu alayhi who is a very intelligent, hakim man, understands the tabi'ah, what Umar is there for. He understands what Umar is there for, so Umar says, Labithna Maliya, we stayed, I stayed there for a little while. Until Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam understood that they want to know what happened. They want to understand everything. So then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam said, Ya Umar, O oh Umar, I tell dream an Do you know who came? So Nabi they did not have, he had the haya. He was scared to ask. So this is a very important part of Nabi alayhi salam. When a person is scared to ask, and you can notice that, to teach them, you should ask, you should engage. So that you do not deprive the person of that knowledge. This is what a true, te true teacher does. See, many teachers when they teach, they expect the student to ask. And if the student doesn't ask, they won't teach. But sometimes if the student is shy or nervous or uncomfortable, the teacher should ask and understand the mizaj and the way of the student. So that they do not deprive that student. So Umar radiallahu is scared, doesn't know how to ask, and doesn't know how to start the discussion. So Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam starts it. And he said, Oh Umar, do you know who asked? And then Umar radiallahu anh, look at the way of a student. He says, Allahu wa rasooluhu alam. I don't know, Allah is a rasool. No. Then Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam gives him the true answer. He says, فَإِنَّهُ Jibreel. It is Jibreel alayhi salam. أَتَاكُمْ يُعَلِّمُكُمْ دِينَكُمْ He is Jibreel alayhi salam. He came to teach you your religion. What a beautiful hadith it is. All of you should um, try and learn the hadith, memorize the hadith, and go over the hadith. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to act upon the teaching of the hadith. Wa akhadawan hamdillahi rabbil alameen.